Let's take a look at some of the equipment that I use to record the guitar now, and there's no better place to get started than the microphone. And I like to use the legendary classic Shure SM57. And I use it in a pretty traditional setup as well too. I pretty much always place it sort of um, halfway between the cone or the edge of the cone and the middle of the cone and so that it's pointed at sort of like the meaty part of the speaker where it's like really thick and there's lots of speaker to point it at. And uh, that's where I like it because I get a, the best balance of sort of bass to treble frequencies right there. And if I want a little bit more treble, then I point it more towards the middle of the cone. And if I want less treble, then I point it further away from that. And then I typically just put the microphone up pretty close to the grill. You like usually like close, as close as I can get it without it like touching the grill accidentally, you know? So usually like an inch away or half an inch away or something like that. And pretty much all the time, that is the, the same setup that I use for recording the guitar. And uh, sometimes I'll move the microphone around a little bit or I might use a condenser microphone if I want a different sort of a sound. Um, but most of the time it really is just a straight up Shure SM57. Here is um, my signal chain that uh, the microphone plugs into. It goes into this uh, warm audio WA73EQ. I like to use this preamp because I feel like it really sort of gives the microphone everything that it needs to give me sort of the best tone that I can get out of the microphone and then therefore I can get the best tone out of the amplifier as well too. And here's how it works. Um, it's got a really awesome um, sort of like a two gain stage preamplifier right here. And uh, so right now I have it turned up halfway because that was a pretty loud signal I was just recording with it. But uh, when you turn it up, you can keep going. And then once you get past this setting right here, it mutes it right there for a second. And then once you get into here, it's got like a second gain stage to it. And then you get like a ton more saturation. So the cool thing about the, this preamp is that you can use it to sort of like saturate the sound of the microphone, just like how you can saturate your amplifier with a distortion pedal or with the gain knob on your, your amplifier. This works the exact same way. It's really cool. It's got a bunch of buttons over here. I won't bother getting into all those right now, but they're just different ways to modify the signal. Um, it's got a high pass signal, signal or uh, a high pass. It's got a high pass filter right here, um, so you can cut out the subsonic frequencies. And I usually leave it set at about 80 hertz for pretty much everything I record here. And uh, it's got a uh, three band uh, parametric EQ with shelving EQs in the bottom and the top, and um, and a bell frequency or bell EQ in the middle. And uh, the EQs sound fantastic, whether you're scooping or boosting, and I never hesitate to boost even the high frequencies. I can boost them as much as I want, and oh boy, this preamp just sounds fantastic. The EQ on it is really, really musical sounding. And then you can turn the EQ on or off, and that, by the way, that includes uh, the high pass filter too. So if you want to have the high pass filter turned on, then you have to have the EQ engaged. But the cool thing is, is that you can turn off the individual bands of the EQ. Um, with these uh, switches here, you can select the frequency or when you turn it all the way down, it actually turns the individual bands off. And that's how I typically use it, is I just use the high pass filter and I leave the individual bands turned off. Uh, yeah, and then I leave the output turned all the way up. Um, I've got this cool Moog 10 band graphic equalizer that I use sometimes, uh, usually for bass, uh, sometimes for synthesizers and drum machines as well too. Um, I don't usually use it for the guitar though, but sometimes I do whenever I want to get uh, a little bit more in depth with the EQ than I can get with the uh, the, the one on the warm audio uh, preamp here too. Uh, yeah, this is uh, by the way, this is uh, this is modeled after a Neve preamp. The uh, the W or I I can't forget what they call it. Something like the something seventy three, and then they call it like the WA seventy three, and you know it's a whole thing. And anyways, yeah, but it sounds really good. <laughs> That's the reason I like to use it here. Uh, the build quality is really nice on it too, and the only thing complaint I have about it are the quality of these three knobs right here. They just don't feel nice when you turn them. They're really loose feeling. I wish that they used like a higher quality potentiometer right there. But other than that, it's a really nice unit and it sounds great. And uh, yeah, and then uh, I feed the output of this preamp into this compressor up here, and this is a, a warm audio uh, WA2A, and this is a model of the Teletronics uh, Universal Audio WA2A compressor. Um, yeah. Uh, 
and uh, or LA two A. Uh, I think that's what it's called. Anyways, um, yeah, this is a really great sounding tube uh, opto compressor, and I don't compress the guitar a whole lot. Um, I usually just pretty much use this just to add a little bit of extra, like a tube sort of gain structure on it. Here, just adjust that uh, the, the zero meter adjustment on it there, and I just shave like a little bit off the top. But I, I, I'm never scared to compress a whole lot with this uh, compressor because it can, it, you can compress as much as you want. And it always sounds like somehow musically awesome. It's really nice, you know. And it's got the output gain here. It's really cool. One thing you can do is you can keep the output down low on the preamp. And then you'd like turn up the output gain on the compressor. And then you get like a whole nother gain stage. And remember like with the guitar, how we were layering all kinds of like different distortion signals earlier. Well, it's cool to do that with mic preamps as well too. Like you can gain, add some gain right here and then dial it back here and then add more right there. And you can add more gain with the EQs right here. And it's, it's really cool when you start looking at recording mic signals, sort of like how you process your guitar signal. And it's really fun to add like a whole nother dimension of tone on top of your guitar as well too. And uh, I like to do it outside of the computer as much as I can because it, it just, I, I like the way it sounds and I especially like the way it feels uh, whenever I'm turning the knobs and I can like instantly hear the difference that it makes instead of like having to like push like a, a thing with my mouse, which is, which is great too, you know, it's just different, you know, but yeah, I really like the way it feels whenever you're just turning knobs themselves. It's really, it's really nice, you know, it feels just like you're like adjusting your amplifier or something like that. It's great. Okay, so then the signal from the compressor, it gets fed into uh, my audio interface here. And this is a Focusrite Scarlett 18i8. And I think this is the Mark III generation one. Yeah, and uh, I take the output from this and I run it through a balanced cable, which is an XLR to a quarter inch TRS. And it gets fed into channel 8, um, which doesn't run through a preamp on this audio interface. And I really like that. Um, because then I'm getting like sort of like the cleanest, most pure tone out of the compressor fed into the audio interface, okay? And um, yeah, so then I take that signal and I run it into my recording software, which is, I use uh, Propellerhead Reason for recording all of my audio and music. And uh, yeah, and uh, this is the audio interface I use to get it there. And it's got like four preamps on the front of it and four line level inputs in the back and it's got like a whole bunch of line level outputs on it midi inputs and outputs and it's just a really really great sounding really nice vanilla transparent rock solid uh audio interface and i one thing i particularly like about it is the audio drivers are super rock solid on Focusrite equipment whether you're using apple or windows operating systems and i'm currently using windows right now here at uh years lab but I also run uh, Apple as well too um, for on other systems here uh, yeah um, what else can I tell you about this it's got really nice loud headphone preamps on it um, I love the big uh, monitor control right here on it and uh, it's got these cool like air sort of things you can turn on for the preamps to sort of like change the sound of the preamps and make them sound a little bit more high-end uh, but uh, yeah they actually sound really cool um, and it's just another sort of thing to play with and yeah, it's a it's a great sounding really well built audio interface and it's whisper quiet and the preamps are strong and they sound great and the headphone preamp sounds great on it. And it doesn't have a whole bunch of extra bells and whistles you don't need just the sort of stuff that is really, really useful in a home studio environment sort of like I have here where you're recording a few different signals, but not like a ton of different things. And you just need something that gives you sort of like a, a good Swiss army knife inside the home studio. And that's what I feel this box is right here. The Scarlet 18i8 is a real nice sort of Swiss army knife audio interface. After I record the guitar, I sync it up with the video in my editing software, which is DaVinci Resolve currently. And uh, then I do a little bit more tweaking, but not really that much. I really want to retain the original character of the signal as much as possible. I pretty much just put like a limiter on it just to make sure that there's not going to be any further sort of uh, digital clipping or distortion or anything like that. And then, uh, and then that's pretty much it. And the, uh, and the guitar signal is recorded and finished. And that is what you hear uh, coming through your speakers. Well, that wraps up today's video where we covered the guitar rig that I use in the Mears Lab home studio. 
I hope you enjoyed it, folks. And if you did, be sure to hit the like button and subscribe to the Mirrors Lab channel for more as well, too. Thanks again for watching, and I'll see you next time.